Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we're gonna do a slight update on the What's New Infusion for July of 2025, specifically talking about mesh texture. Now, when I did the What's New video yesterday, I talked about mesh texture and how it wasn't really great. It didn't quite work how I had expected. And a few of you commented and told you my, uh, your experiences with the tool and that it did actually work on grayscale images. And basically it came down to the images that I used just kind of sucked. So I wanted to do an update on this, talk a little bit about how we can use this tool and maybe answer a few questions that I've seen come up for people trying to do things like apply a carbon fiber texture to something they're gonna 3D print. So in the comments of that video, I did mention there are slicers out there that will add textures, but if you are doing this in Fusion or in some uh, slicers, like I use the bamboo slicer mainly right now, uh, you really only have fuzzy skin or that fuzzy texture you can do on the outside. So what we're gonna cover today is how we can get access to some of those grayscale images that are used for bump maps in Fusion so you don't have to download anything. And then also talk about how the tool works a little bit better than we did yesterday. So the first thing is I just have a couple of mesh bodies. These were converted using Tessellate and they're just really high density. This is one important key. You need a really high density mesh in order for the textures to really work. If you have uh, too few polygons or triangles on the top face of your part or the outside face of your part, then what you're gonna end up with is just very blocky and unrealistic looking texture. Uh, I also have just a solid body over here that we're gonna talk about for the purposes of applying a, uh, a, a texture to. So the first thing that we wanna do is I'm gonna go in and apply a carbon fiber plane directly to this body here. Uh, so you can kind of see what happens. It, it has this twill pattern to it. And if we right click and we edit this and we go into our advanced section, what you'll see is that there is a grayscale image that's used for the texture. Now, I've covered this before in videos on trying to render more realistic carbon fiber. And the way that we do this is by adding a bump map. So in this relief section, we'll add a bump map and we'll just select the same image that's used for the texture itself for the highlights. And the bump map itself, what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to actually have a little bit of visual depth to the body. Now this is great because it doesn't really take any additional processing on the design side. You're not gonna slow down the model when you're trying to rotate it or work with it. Um, and this does work on solid bodies. It doesn't really work as well on a mesh body because of the way the texture gets applied to individual faces. But if you are dealing with solid bodies and you wanna do something like this, it's a great way to add a material that has a texture or some sort of pattern to it. Now, what I would say is if you click on this image, you can figure out the source of it by hovering over the uh, basically the hyperlink here that you would use to replace it. And generally this is located in your user folder under your app data. You can follow uh, where it's saved on your own computer, but essentially you can go and you can find that image. When you find that image, you'll also find a bunch of other images for materials that you may have downloaded. And you'll notice a couple of different things. There are normal maps uh, that help with things like reflections. There are the bump maps, which um, in, some in some cases they're called specular maps or specular spread. And you can see that there are some in here for things like leather and brass and rubber material. So you can play around with these different grayscale images. This is really what we're looking for so anytime you see one that's listed as height, this is probably the best case image for what you're looking for. So any um, anyone that has height listed is going to be better because this sort of really blurry looking grayscale image is the ideal one that we want, which means the transitions between those high and low spots are gonna be much better. You can use ones that are higher contrast, but you will get a sharper change between their heights. So basically what this means is you want your, your highs and lows to be really close to each other and the overall texture is not gonna be very high. But something like this, this linear maple, that uh, is that blurry look between the, the highs and the lows, that's what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy this image and I basically just for this video, I just have a folder where I'm putting bump maps essentially that we can use. So we'll play around with these. All right, so now that we understand how to apply an appearance and also where we can find the, the pre-downloaded ones from appearances or materials inside of Fusion, 
we're now going to go into direct editing and I'm going to select all these mesh bodies to do it at once. When you do direct edit on meshes in Fusion, it will automatically copy these when we finish it. So in the bodies folder, we're now working on a copy of the mesh. So when we're done, we should still retain the original if we need it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the edges. I use a shortcut key control and four. You can also go down to your display settings and go to your visual style and go to shaded without edges. Whenever you have a mesh and you've got a lot of triangles, it can be really hard uh, to, to actually view them because it just looks black. So what we're going to do is also display the mesh face groups. Now, if yours aren't auto generated, you can go and you can click this option up here in the prepare section. This is uh, really beneficial to have these, uh, these sections for two reasons. One, if you are working with meshes and you ever go through the process of converting your mesh. So if you want to convert your mesh from, let's say, this mesh body to a prismatic feature, once you're out of direct modeling, then this is going to really help you. Uh, the second thing is when we go in to do a texture extrude, you want to make sure that in the selection filter you use face group because it'll let you grab the faces based on their colors, not based on the triangles. So this is really important because we want to apply a texture to the top. Then we're gonna add an image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that carbon fiber image, the one that we just applied over here. You'll notice that it comes in small. What we can do is we can toggle on this repeat option and the repeat option will allow it to essentially just apply it across the board. What we're also gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this around and pull it down into the bottom left corner. And then we want to think about the whites and the dark sections. So in this case, the whites are going to be raised up. So I've got it on an asymmetric extrude, which means I can dictate the highs and the lows independently. So I'm going to put the whites at one millimeter and leave the blacks at zero, which is, means any of these dark areas will be the current height of that face. And then I'm going to turn on a preview. Now the repeat should automatically tile this all the way across. Now what you can see based on the resolution of my mesh and the size of that image, really the one millimeter is too tall. So if we take it down to say 0.5 and allow it to regenerate this, we're gonna see that's looking a bit better. You can also scale this up. So I'm gonna just go ahead and scale this up a little bit. Uh, we can actually go quite a bit bigger. We can, I mean, you can go as big as you want, obviously. So let's go a little bit bigger. And the, the bigger that we get with this relative to the size of triangles we have on our mesh, the smoother and better the texture is gonna look. So again, this is why it's important that we have a really high density mesh in order to make these textures look as good as possible. So that looks pretty large. Repeat is kind of not needed here, but I'm gonna say, okay. And now what we've done is we've created a carbon fiber texture on top of this part. I'm gonna temporarily turn off the face groups so that we're looking at just a gray color and might be a little bit easier to see that the pink is very bright. So you can see all the lines that would be on the fabric. You can kind of see how they got raised up or if they were black in color, they were left on the original height. So that looks pretty good. It looks pretty realistic. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the face groups back on again because it's important for our selection process. It's gonna take a second to, to redo this. These remeshed, just simple bodies here have a lot of triangles, so that does take quite a bit of time. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we'll take a look at some other textures. So this time I'm gonna, again, make sure we're on face group. We'll select that face. Uh, next, I am gonna come in and I'll grab that maple one that we looked at. I'm gonna go ahead and scale it up before the preview turns on. Now, in this case, we may wanna change the colors. We may want the darker colors to be up and we may want the lighter colors to stay at the same level. I'll turn the preview on. And again, what this is doing is it's raising up those dark sections on the image and it's leaving the, the lower white sections at that base level. And anything that's in between based on the grayscale is going to get raised up. There is also a blend value here. We talked about that a little bit in the What's New video. That blend value goes from where the image stops to the surrounding mesh because this image is completely covering the entire top of this part it's not really needed once we say okay now we should have that sort of maple grain texture 
applied to the mesh. So that looks pretty good. All right, let's take a look at a couple more. So once again, texture extrude. This resets every time for some odd reason. So we'll select that top face. And a couple of the other images I have, um, my editor, Matthew, he is the one that generated these images. So this one here, I believe is blood vessels. And I'm gonna go ahead and scale that one up. So as we're looking at the image, the white blood vessels we want raised up. So I'm gonna leave the black points at zero and I'm gonna put the white points up pretty extreme. I'm gonna put them to two millimeter and we'll let it generate that image. We'll say, okay. And you can see there, now we've got that sort of uh, texture. And last but not least, let's go ahead and take a look at one more. So once again, we'll do face groups. We'll select an image. And I've got a couple more that he generated. And we'll go ahead and we'll use this one. Uh, so in this one here, I'm going to go ahead and scale it up. I'm going to go ahead and set the white as the high points. The black will be the low points. We'll preview that. And you can see because of repeat is on, it's carrying the texture across. If I turn repeat off, it's gonna stop exactly where the image stops and you can see it's straight up and down. And if we increase this blend distance, let's go ahead and set that at five millimeters. That should do a gradual transition on this edge. Let's go ahead and see if it does. It's thinking real hard. Yeah, so you can, you can kind of see it did a gradual transition instead of just dropping all the way. Now, if I make that number smaller, based on the size of my block, you might see that it tapers down before it gets back to that original level. But overall, this is the general process. And I, I wanted to come back and basically redo this because the images I used originally, I had made some with just simple black lines and circles that worked, but the grayscale images that I had were just not great. Um, some of them were generated by you know, image generators and, and Adobe and things like that. And they just, they didn't meet the mark. So a true grayscale image or a texture, let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off and we'll get out of direct edit. But a true grayscale image is gonna give you a much better result. It does actually work based on the grayscale height map and you can get some pretty unique textures out of it. Uh, just remember that if you are using this on more complex shapes, that you do still go in and you generate face groups that'll help you apply textures to specific areas. And those face groups are generated based on a change in angle between the polygons. So that means that if you've got a sharp edge on a part and you want to apply a texture just to one face, even if it's organic, then you can do that as well. Um, and actually, while we're here, I will go ahead and I will just make some sort of funky shape. I haven't done this before, so it probably is going to mean that it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and just make this a little bit more complex. And maybe we'll pull this up and over. And while we're in here, I'm going to thicken it. All right, so now we have a solid body. I am gonna go ahead and tessellate that. Now, when we're tessellating it, one thing we need to be aware of is things like the maximum edge length. I want to keep this to a very large number of polygons, again, in, able, uh, in order to apply a texture. So it's gonna take a, a little bit for it to generate. You can do a very low polygon mesh and you can refine just an individual face if you want. That's probably gonna be a better way to go if you are dealing with complex shapes that have a lot of details and you maybe don't want to do a full high density uh, triangulation of that design. You may find that just doing it with a low number of polygons and refining those specific faces can be helpful. Uh, this is thinking pretty hard because I already have some well, at this point, I've got eight meshes in the file that have a lot of triangles already. Okay, so now we've got this. I am going to hide all the other ones because I don't need to see them. 
So we'll hide, oh, it's thinking. We'll hide that and we'll hide those because we don't need them. We will turn on face groups, let it generate that. Uh, again, the higher density mesh you have, the longer this process takes. I would uh, always suggest if you are going through this process that you copy the solid body or surface that you're dealing with before you tessellate it and turn it into a mesh. There are dedicated mesh programs that work a bit better for this. I am gonna hide the edges. You can see it automatically generated that based on those sharp corners. So now if I go into direct edit and we're gonna apply a carbon fiber texture to this. So we're gonna go to modify, texture extrude. Uh, we wanna select face groups and we'll select that uh, carbon fiber. Again, this bump map came directly from Fusion, so it's in the material library there. And you can see that it's kind of floating above. We're gonna turn repeat on. We're gonna scale it up so that it's a little bit more appropriate. And I'm gonna set the white to 0.5 millimeters and we'll leave the black at the default. And we'll say, okay, and just cross our fingers and see what this looks like without a preview. Even though we're in direct edit, we always do still have undo and redo. So we have the ability to do that if we need to. Uh, it's probably gonna take a good bit of time to generate this. So let's just um, listen to some elevator music and see what happens. All right, and there we go. So I'm not gonna lie, that took a few minutes to calculate. And I was always a little concerned it was gonna crash, but we, we're able to successfully apply a carbon fiber texture to the outside of a 3D part. So it is possible. Uh, so it is something, certainly something you can do. And this new feature does respect true grayscale images. So you can use a true grayscale image, or in this case, what we used was a bump map directly from Fusion's appearance library. So if you were trying to 3D print a carbon fiber texture like this, keeping in mind that the resolution of your mesh is gonna have a direct impact on how it looks. And always remember that whether or not your 3D printer can actually print down to this resolution. So if you're using something like an SLA printer, maybe fine. If you're using an FDM, then maybe not gonna quite get as much detail out of this, uh, out of this as you think. But I did wanna just at least update based on those comments that I got. I always appreciate getting comments. Um, if it, if ever anything in the video is wrong or incorrect or can be better, then I love seeing those comments and we'll do our best to uh, correct any of those errors or mistakes that we make. But if you have any questions on this tool or anything else that was new for July, then please let me know. Uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.